In this lesson, we're going to be going over atomic structure. So we'll be looking at all the little pieces that make up an atom. These are called subatomic particles. But first, here's the definition of an atom. It's the smallest particle of an element that still has the same properties of that element. And hopefully, by now, you know what an element is. So the first subatomic particle is called a proton. Now, the protons in this picture are those little yellow positively charged substances. They have little plus signs in them. Protons have a positive charge. They also have a mass of 1.673 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. This is super, super tiny. They are located in the nucleus, which is that center cluster of uh, particles. The neutron is next. The neutron is represented by these orange spheres. They have no charge. So neutrons have no charge, hence the word neutral, neutron. They are neutrally charged. They have a mass of 1.675 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. So just a little bit bigger than a proton. They are also located in the nucleus. The last subatomic particle is the electron. An electron has a negative charge. It has a mass of 9.109 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms. So way, way smaller than both protons and neutrons. And they're located in a place called the electron cloud. And that is found outside of the nucleus. Now one little thing to note is that scientists hate dealing with this really, really, really small number. Uh, so instead of calling it 1.673 times 10 to the negative 27, they just decided this is going to be 1 AMU, or 1 atomic mass unit. So a proton is 1 AMU, a neutron is 1 AMU, and an electron is 0 AMU. Now there's something wrong with this picture. Actually, a couple things wrong with this picture. It's a great picture and you'll find all kinds of pictures like this on the internet when you type in atom, but there's a huge issue with it. And issue number one is that electrons are not actually located in rings around the nucleus like planets revolving around the sun. They're actually located in these things called orbitals, not orbits. An orbital is a three-dimensional space found outside the nucleus. We'll get more into that later. The next problem with this picture is it's not to scale. So what does an atom really look like if we were to draw to scale? Well, I want you to imagine an atom is the size of a city. The nucleus inside of that atom would be the size of a basketball. So a basketball in the center of a city is really what we're looking at here when we talk about atoms, which means that most of an atom is empty space. So you are made of mostly empty space. Depressing, I know. The next thing we will be talking about is elements. I would highly recommend going to ptable.com. It's one of my favorite periodic tables and it's the one that I will be using most of the time because it has all kinds of great information and I can sort through different tabs and cut out the information I don't need and only have the information I do need. So if you look at hydrogen, for example, you'll see this big prominent number on hydrogen. This is called the atomic number. It is the most important number of every element. That tells us the number of protons. And you'll notice that no two elements have the same atomic number, which means that no two elements have the same number of protons, which means that the number of protons tells us what type of element we have. Next, you'll find the symbol and the name. Now, every periodic table is arranged a little differently, but for the most part, they all contain the same information. Finally, at the bottom, you will see the atomic mass, and this is measured in AMU. And you'll notice it's not a nice, pretty number like 1. It is 1.008. Well, why is it like that? The reason is because this number is actually an average atomic mass. So it's an average of all of the atoms of hydrogen, which tells us that all of the atoms of hydrogen are not the same. And we'll get into more of that later. Another word you should know is the mass number. Now you won't see the mass number on the periodic table because the mass number can change depending on what type of hydrogen we have. But the mass number 
is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, which should make sense because we just discussed that electrons don't have mass, or they have very little mass, so the mass number should just be the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. An easy way to remember that is because the number, the word number is used so frequently in that definition. The last thing you need to know is that an atom has the same number of protons as electrons. So the number of positively charged particles equals the number of negatively charged particles. This means that all atoms are neutral, meaning they have a net neutral charge. They have zero charge all together with all the particles put together, all the negatives and positives and neutrals, of course, put together.